Hello and welcome. Today I'll be talking about industrial grease. So we'll start off by talking about the uses of grease. So grease is used in a general sense to reduce friction between two moving parts. In reducing the friction, it reduces the wear, the heat buildup and the sound produced between the two parts. Modern greases use the process of shear thinning to reduce friction further than a normal fluid or oil would. It works by the fact that the viscosity decreases when more stress is applied to the grease. This means that the thick grease can stay where you want it to be until it is loaded upon, in which it then acts like an oil. Other uses of grease are in the cooling and heat transfer of parts. So this is useful in bearings. We want consistent expansion and contraction. Grease is also used as a seal and also used to prevent moisture and particle ingress into bushings and moving parts. So, 86 million metric tons of grease is used worldwide. So that's quite a lot. Moving on from this, we'll talk about the history of Greece. So the first signs of Greece were in the Roman era. In the Roman era, they used lime and olive oil to make a basic grease. In the Egyptian era, they were also seen to use blood and animal fat. And in the 18th century, Sweden, they also used black slugs as a lubricant in their wooden cart bearings. So everything changed in 1859 when there was the start of the petroleum industry. So this is when they started pumping crude oil out of the ground. Developments were further made in 1920s when vacuum distillation was discovered. This means they could then extract grade 2 and grade 3 oils out of the basic crude oil. This was further developed in 1970 when hydrocracking was discovered. So hydrocracking is used in the synthesis of synthetic oils. So this is grade 4 and 5 oils. This in turn means a more pure and stable grease can be produced. So here we see the modern greases ingredient list essentially and what goes into them. So 80 to 90 percent of a modern grease is an oil base. The rest is a alkali emulsifier or a thickener. Then additives are also added to enhance the physical properties of the grease. So let's talk about the base oils which make up most of the grease. So they normally come from two sources. They're either a petroleum based or an organic based. So petroleum bases they can be groups two or three as I was saying before or they can be four or five. These are depend on what's cheap, available, and what mechanical properties are wanted from the grease. Other base oils which can be used are animal and plant based. So these are normally used in culinary purposes when the grease must be food safe in case it gets into the food or along the food production. Now let's talk about the thickness. So the thickness change the property of the grease the most out of all the other ingredients. So the most used one is lithium hydroxide. It takes up 75% of the grease market. And this is pretty much because it's so cheap. So it has a high working temperature as well, 109 degrees Celsius. This makes it good for most industrial purposes. For example, this forklift on the right, that would, I'm sure would have lithium or lithium hydroxide, which then makes it lithium grease. So other forms you might know, other additives which can be used, would be calcium acetate. So calcium acetate is used in situations where there's a lot of water present. And it's used here because it's hydrophobic. This means it repels water away from the bearing or bushing which it may be in. Downside of this is that it has a low maximum working temperature. This is why you see it in slow moving parts such as this crane, which is near water as well. So, sodium stearate is a thickener. This is used in long life situations such as CV joints and cars where there is no maintenance and the grease will never be replaced. Other thickeners which are used are aluminium hydroxide. 
So this is used in high-speed applications, and it's used in high-speed applications because of its high adhesion. This means it sticks very well onto the moving part, which means it's never leaving the part unlubricated. So the final ingredient in a grease is the grease additives. So these increase the physical properties of the grease in a beneficial way. So a few here to look at, we've got the additive on the left hand side and how it changes the grease and the key characteristics on the right. So a few to look here would be molybdenum disulfate. This is commonly used in industry as it highly, or very effectively so, reduces the friction between two parts. And it does this by filling in the voids in the two contacting surfaces, thus making two surfaces which slide over better. Other additives which are worth paying attention to would be copper. So a copper powder is added to dielectric greases, and this adds to the electrical conductivity of the grease. And this is exactly what you want in a dielectric grease. So moving on, let's talk about the sustainability of greases. So environmental sustainability, this is a big contributor due to the 86 million metric tons of grease used annually. So ways we can improve the sustainability here would be the use to natural or organically based oils. So we'd see this as growing crops like castor, canola, palm and sunflower. We can also improve the environmental sustainability by the use of more renewable thickness. Another way we can increase sustainability is by looking at the economic sustainability. So what will be viable in the future? So a main point we'll see here will be the reduction of petroleum-based products due to the reduction in petroleum drilling as everyone becomes more green, changes to electric vehicles, etc. So as we see this reduction in petroleum demand, we also need to see the increase in research and development of alternate base oils. So for example, this would be research into the organic or grown oils, like I was saying in the previous slide. And with this new development, there needs to be new marketing and sales coming along with it as the new product fully displaces the old petroleum-based products. So this will be a big change for the world and hopefully have a big effect if we can get every, all the base oils changed across to the organics instead. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps up this talk for today. Hope you enjoyed and learned some, a lot about Greece. Thanks for watching, Papa Bless.